I'm Math 15ers. Uh, we're looking at chapter 10.4, which is about volume. Now, you might think of volume as being uh, simply length times, times width times height, which is fine for a rectangular prism. Um, but I want to talk about kind of what volume is. Um, if we have something, some cube, that is one by one by one, that is one unit cubed. Uh, that's our measurement of volume, one cubic unit. If we take another one of those and put it next to it, uh, we would have something that would be two by one by one, right? It would be two along this, this edge and then one by one on the other edge. And there we would have two cubes. So that would be two units cubed. Literally, the unit of measure is a cubic unit. Um, if it were inches, it would be cubic inches, two cubic inches if these were each inch dimensions or in foot dimensions, it would be cubic feet. Um, so if you think about it, one cubic foot, that would be one by one by one. Um, if you were to translate that to inches, that would be 12 inches by 12 inches by 12 inches. A, a cubic inch is a fairly small measurement, you know, cubic inch, right? Whereas a cubic foot is a large measurement. And, and actually a hundred and, well, how many, how many fit, how many of those fit into this? If we have 12 by 12 by 12, we would have 12 by 12 just sitting down on the base, an inch high. Um, so we would have a deck, a deck here um, of, of one inch little cubes if these were one foot by one foot, where we'd have 12, 12, 12 in this direction, 12 in this direction, we'd have 144 inch cubes on each layer, and there would be 12 layers, right? So the number of cubic inches in a cubic foot would be 12 times 144. There'd be lots of little cubes in this big cubic foot. Um, so that's one way to think about, about cubic measurements. I also want you to be thinking about cubic measurements as the area of the base times the height. So if we have even an odd shape, as long as the bottom of the shape and the top of the shape, I didn't draw the shape great, um, are the same, as long as the base and the top are the same, then these heights, this is just a height measurement. So we basically have this base, the area of this base being repeated this many times is in height, just like this layer of little cubes gets repeated 12 times to fill up the whole foot by foot by foot cube. Um, so we might think of that as like a deck of cards. So if we have a deck of cards, um, the top card has the same dimensions as uh, the bottom card. And um, we almost think about the cards as being the layers. So um, the more cards you put, the greater volume you have, the larger your box gets, it grows up towards you. Um, and we think of these as slices of, of the whole volume of this rectangular prism that the cards make up when you hold them together. So you need the area of the base, and then you need to multiply that by all the bases you're kind of putting on top of it. Now, what also is important to note that is this has a volume when it's perfectly rectangular prismed, but it also has exactly the same volume if you start to splay it a little bit and have some little bit of a weird shape to it. It's still exactly the same volume. Um, we haven't changed the volume by putting a little bit of a slant angle on it. That's totally fine. We would have to measure the height directly up and down because these layers just have shifted. Right? Now we also might want to think of that in a cylinder type idea. So here's, here's a bunch of washers. Um, ignore that they're hollow in the middle, think of them more as discs, right? But um, you can think of this as a slice. So you would take the area of the circle because that's the base, and we have the same type of base up here on the top. And we'd have the area of the circle times the height of the 
uh, cylinder. That would give us the volume of the cylinder. So we take the area of the base and we just start stacking onto it those pieces. And again, the volume doesn't change if we, if we kind of tilt it off to the side. It's still the same volume. Right? So I think with that, without even doing any examples, I think you're going to be able to do the problems about volume in the chapter. Um, if you're having trouble, uh, you can look at the examples in the chapter. That would be totally fine. Or even talk to each other or ask me in class when you get to class. But I think, I think just from that conceptual understanding of what volume is, I think you should be able to handle this chapter fine.